Hello everyone, DM Gashbad here, and today I'm starting a new game, Zombicide Black Plague. Well, technically it's not my first game. Many years ago I did play one game, a person I knew clearly bought into the Kickstarter and brought a whole bunch of us over to play a game. I thought it was a really good system. I actually adapted some of the mechanics for a heist game in my D&D group. So ever since then, I've been kind of on the lookout for a copy of my own at a reasonable price, and last year I finally got one. As always, it took me a little bit of time to get everything set up, but we're ready and we're going to play through Quest Zero, the tutorial mission, Dance Macabre. Now right away you've probably noticed something a little unusual about the miniatures. Just like for my Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion playthrough, I'm using Warhammer models. Unlike Gloomhaven, it's not because I don't care for the quality of the miniatures in Zombicide Black Plague. I think they're really nice. However, as I've said many times before, I'm a very slow painter, and if you guys had to wait for me to get through 70 new miniatures before I could play this game, we'd all be waiting a really long time. So I'm going to use my old Warhammer Fantasy models, and I've painted up a couple of new things to complete the game. And of course the benefit of this is now I have these guys ready to use in Warhammer Fantasy as well. So this is my team for the first quest. From left to right, we have Nelly, Baldrick, Samson, and Silas. Because we always get six starting equipment cards no matter how many characters we're actually using, Nelly is going to start the game with a short sword, Baldrick is going to start the game with Mana Blast and a short sword, Samson gets a hammer and Silas gets the short bow and another short sword. For those of you who are curious about the models, Nelly is a converted Sisters of Sigmar from the Mordheim range, Baldrick is a conversion of the Plastic Empire Wizard and some pieces from the Celestial Hurricaneum. Samson is a dwarf hammer, and Silas is the elf from Warhammer Quest. As for the bad guys, zombies of course are going to be regular zombies, the runners are going to be my shadow ghouls, and the fatties are going to be represented by Nurgle Plaguebearers. The starting mission doesn't use abominations or necromancers, so we don't have to worry about those. So with all that out of the way, here is the board for the game. You can see we've got a zombie, a fatty, and a runner already set up. The blue door is right in front of us, and the blue key is immediately to the left. There's two red objectives on the other side, and once I get the green objective, which is one of those, the green spawn point is going to become activated. You may also notice that in order to get to that right-hand side of the board, I have to go through the vault, and the exit is in the top right. So to start things out, I'm going to activate Nelly. Nelly gets a free move action every round as her special ability, so I'm going to use that to move into the room on the left with the blue key. She's then going to use her final two actions to move back into the street and then up into that square with the zombie. Next, I'm going to activate Samson the Dwarf. Samson is going to move down the street to help out Nelly, and he's going to take a swing at that zombie with his hammer. Needs a 4 plus to hit, and he misses, and then he uses his last action to swing again and also misses. Not a great start, Samson. So next, I'm going to activate Silas the Elf. Silas takes aim with his short bow and fires at the zombie ahead of him. The good news is that Silas is plus one to hit with ranged attacks, so with the shortbow being a three plus to hit, that means he only fails on a one. The bad news is, is that if he misses, then one of my teammates in that zone, Nelly and Samson, take the hit instead. Fortunately, he doesn't roll a one, he kills the zombie, then he hops to the left into that room there, searches it, and ends up with some chainmail, which is not bad. Finally, Baldrick the wizard moves up to that blue door and tries to stab it open with his short sword. I mean, yeah, technically he needs a 4 plus to hit, but it's unsurprising that the old wizard is unable to do it. He tries twice, makes two noise tokens, and the door stays shut. So with all my characters having gone, it's now time for the zombies to go. None of the zombies on the board can get anywhere interesting, so we go straight to spawning creatures. So I draw a spawn card for the red spawn zone immediately to the left, and I get a double spawn, which means right away I draw in a regular walker and a fatty. So new round for the heroes, and Samson has got the hammer, so I'm going to start with the dwarf. He moves left, putting himself in a kind of a dangerous spot right on top of that spawn zone. So he takes a swing with that hammer, and he kills the fatty, which is great. He then turns it on the walker, but misses. I activate Silas next, and hearing the sounds of combat, he runs down the street and takes aim with his short bow into that other zone. This time, however, he rolls a 1 and so shoots Samson in the back. Samson does have the Ironhide skill, which means that he can save against hits on the roll of a 5+, plus, but he fails, and he gets stuck for 1 point of damage, and that is the reason that dwarfs do not trust elves. 
So now it's time for Nellie to sort things out for the boys. She takes her free move action into that spawn zone, but her next two actions result in misses from her short sword. Thankfully, she finally cuts down that one zombie with her last action and gets herself an XP. Probably just as well Samson isn't left all alone in the spawn zone. Finally, that leaves Baldrick and the only thing he's got to do is try and open that blue door. And as you would expect, he spends all three actions and can't get a single four plus to get it open. Who put the wizard in charge of this? Back to the zombie turn, and again, the only thing that we can do is go on to the spawn phase. That red spawn zone gets two more walkers. So new round, and I'm going to start with Silas, and he's going to try and make up for last round. I kind of just want to free up these other characters to get him to move away from that spawn zone. Anyway, he takes aim and manages to kill both of those zombies without hitting any of his friends. But then for whatever reason, for my third and final action, I don't do anything. I just pass. Not sure why I didn't try and open up that door. Elf was too busy congratulating himself, I suppose. So next it's Nellie's turn. She moves up and tries her hand at opening up this door with her short sword. Short swords are just not the tools for this. She fails two times in a row to get that 4+. plus. That seems like a lot of failures, even for me. She does manage to bust it open on her third and final action, so we finally get to draw a spawn card to see what's inside that room, and we get a fatty. So another Plague Bearer pops up, and that means it's time for Samson, because he's got the hammer. He spends two actions to move into that room, but he's still having problems with this. He misses the fatty, and now that puts him in a vulnerable position. How do you miss a fatty, Samson? So now all I've got left is Baldrick, and he doesn't have any equipment that can actually harm this Plague Bearer. He moves into the room and then just passes for his final two actions. Now, this is my first game. What I should have done is gone in there and then traded with Samson to take that hammer from him, which he is no good at using, and then use my final action to take a swing at this Plague Bearer. But I didn't really understand how trading equipment works at this point, so I didn't do that. All I wanted to do was move into this room and take a point of damage for Samson. Kind of spread out the harm. Sure enough, Zombie Phase comes along and the Plague Bearer stabs Baldrick for one point of damage and we spawn a runner, a ghoul, in that red spawn zone. So it's back over to the heroes and I start with Samson. I need to get that Plague Bearer dead, so I swing with that hammer and this time I finally kill him. Cool. I think Samson could use a little bit better equipment, so he searches the room and he finds a great sword. Can't really use that, so I then activate a trade action and I hand the great sword to Baldrick. Next, I activate Silas the Elf. Silas shoots down that ghoul runner with no problem. He moves into the room. He also takes a search action, which nets him plenty of bolts, which does him no good whatsoever. He needs some arrows. Baldrick is up next. He also takes a search action. I just feel like there's a lot of loot in this room. I get some dragon bile, which is fantastic. And then because I'm a moron and I haven't learned from my mistakes, I tell Baldrick to go try and open that door. And of course now he's using a great sword, which is even worse for some reason at opening doors than a short sword, and so he fails twice. So finally it's Nellie's turn. She moves into that room. Everyone else is having so much fun ransacking it. She searches as well, but she finds a zombie hiding in the cupboard. That's no good, because I only have Nellie's two actions left. So if the zombie survives, it's going to take a bite out of someone. She does miss with her next action, but then her final action, she kills the zombie, and not only that, she goes up a level, so she gets another action. And I know I probably shouldn't do this, but I've been having such a hard time opening these doors, I feel I need to commit as many dice as I can to this. So for her last action, she takes a swing at that door in front of her, and she manages to bust it open. So we have to see what's in here besides that one plague bearer. For the first room, we get two more walkers, and for the second, we get four. Little zombie house party. And now the zombies come to party with us. The Plague Bearer and the two zombies walk into our room with the four following behind them. The red zone adds to the fiesta by spawning two more zombies. Could have been worse, at least no one got an extra activation. Back to the heroes and I activate Samson first. Because of target priority, I have to attack the fatty first. And he takes two damage and the only weapon that does two damage is Samson's hammer. Unfortunately, um, what's the word for this? Uh, Samson is bad at things. He spends all three of his actions to miss the fatty three times in a row. Samson, you're the worst. So because my dwarf is such a dismal failure, now I have to look up the trading rules. And so I activate Baldrick, figure it out, and I activate a trade with Samson. So I'm going to take away that hammer from you, Samson. Maybe you can have it back when I think that you've learned how to operate it correctly. You can have a great sword in the meantime. 
So now I have a wizard with a hammer, which works out a lot better. Baldrick immediately kills the fatty that's assaulting our room and another walker besides. I activate Silas next. Silas is going to take a little bit of a chance and he's going to shoot the zombie in the same room as us. I could try and stab him with the short sword, but the thing is I kill the zombie on a 2 plus instead of the 4 plus for the short sword. Granted, the short sword isn't going to shoot any of my friends by mistake, but I managed to roll that 2 plus and kill off that zombie, so I think it worked out. And the hot streak continues. He kills two more zombies with his next two actions in the room adjacent. That punches him up a level to the yellow zone, and he gets an extra action as well, which he immediately uses to pincushion yet another zombie. Finally, it's Nelly's turn. With her free move action, she moves into the room with that last zombie, immediately executes it, and then she searches that room and ends up with a torch, which is cool, because now I can use the torch and the dragon bile together to make a holy hand grenade. Not wanting to be left in that room all alone, she moves back to the rest of the party and activates a trade with Baldrick to hand him that torch. Zombie turn again, and the two zombies shuffle forward, and the red zone spawns another fatty. Over to the heroes, Nelly's activating first, she takes a free move action into that room and then spends the next three actions ineffectively smashing that door to the south. So bad at opening doors. Her fourth action finally manages to break it down. For her troubles, she spawns one runner in the room directly below her to go with the other runner that's already there, and the second room gets two fatties. These spawns are getting a little bit busier now that we're in the yellow experience level. Activate Silas next. He moves up and then takes a shot at those runners down below. He misses with his first shot, but then with his next two actions, kills those two off. Baldrick activates next. He takes the opportunity to fire a mana blast into the street where the two zombies are lurking. He misses, so all he does is produce some noise. Still, I want to keep moving forward. So instead of hanging out and shooting fireballs at these zombies, he moves into the room with his companions and he searches it. And because he's now holding a torch in his hand because he reorganized his equipment when Nelly gave him the torch, he can draw two equipment cards and gets himself another jar of dragon bile and a sword. The sword is kind of cool because it can go on his armor slot, and he also takes the opportunity to move the dragon bile in place of the mana blast because I've got those two plague bearers coming at me from the south and I've got a plan for them. Finally, it's Samson's turn. He moves into the room with the rest of his friends and also does a search. He finds himself plenty of bolts as well, which again does him no good whatsoever, but he activates a trade with Baldric. He takes Baldric's sword because it's just better than the greatsword that he's using. Baldric can have the greatsword himself. Samson also takes the spare jar of dragon bile. So it's zombie turn again. All the zombies shuffle forward and we spawn two more runners in the red zone. Back to the heroes and it's time for a plague bearer barbecue. Baldric goes first and lobs the dragon bile into that room in front of him and then lobs the torch and lights those two on fire immediately killing them. He uses his last action to walk into that room and savor the sweet smell of victory. Nelly activates next. She takes two move actions to get into the room with the vault door and in an unexpected twist manages to pop it open on the first try. She drops down into the vault and loots it, managing to get herself the Inferno spell. Silas is up next. He pauses briefly to kill the two walkers in the room behind him before spending his next two actions to move into the room with the vault door. And finally, Samson the dwarf searches that big room one last time, gets himself a longbow, which is kind of cool, and then goes to join Baldric. Back to the zombies, the plague bearer shuffles forward and the two ghouls fall in behind him. We also spawn two more ghoul runners in the red zone. Over to the heroes again and Baldric jumps into the vault. He can't wait to get his hands on Nelly's Inferno Scroll. Takes that from her, gives her mana blast. Also takes the opportunity to put the hammer back in his hand. Samson's up next and he jumps into the vault as well and tries to open up the opposing vault door with his brand new sword, but he's no better at the sword than he was with the hammer and he fails. Nelly activates next and learns that stabbing doors just doesn't work real well. Just like Samson, she has problems, misses twice in a row, and then finally gets that 4 plus to pop that opposing vault door open. This spawns a runner in that room, but she's not worried about that at all. She hops up the stairs and kills the runner immediately. Finally, it's Silas's turn. He hops into the vault, grabs himself an orcish crossbow, and then runs up the stairs to join Nelly. 
So now it's the zombie turn, the plague bearer shuffles forward his one room, and the ghoul runners sprint forward too. And then when we get to the red spawn zone, we don't get any spawns this round, but we get an extra runner activation. So they absolutely burn down the game board. The lead two runners actually end up in the vault with Baldrick and Samson. I was kind of hoping to leave the zombies that spawned in that red zone behind, but they are catching up to me. Although it could have been worse if I was just a little less far forward, then I would have taken a bunch of damage. So back to the heroes, and we're going to start with Samson the Dwarf. Samson's now wielding his longsword, which is twice as good as the hammer or the short sword at killing runners. And so with his first action, he kills off one of the runners, and with his second, he kills off the last one. That helps him put a little XP on his track and uses his last action to hop up the stairs and end up in the room with Silas and Nellie. For her part, Nellie has gotten this door opening thing down. She cracks open the door to the street and she moves up three spaces and gets the first objective. It ends up not being the green objective, so we still have to get that other one so we can open up that green door, but she does get the 5 XP for picking it up. Baldrick is next. He comes up out of the vault and searches that room with Samson. He finds himself a dagger, which doesn't really help him in this case, and then moves out onto the street. Silas the Elf takes three move actions and then grabs that objective, which will be the green objective. We've got the green key. We can get to the room with the exit, but it does activate that green spawn zone, so now we got to deal with that. Which brings us to zombie turn. The plague bearer continues to shuffle down that large building in the center. The runner ghouls manage to make it into the vault. And we spawn another plague bearer on the green zone, which we just activated. And three more walkers in the red. The plague bearer fatty is blocking our escape route, but that's okay. I have just the tool to deal with him because Baldrick now has the inferno spell, which throws four dice for an action. It'll wound on a 4 plus and does 2 damage, just the thing for taking out these guys. He moves up one square to get it in range, fires off that spell, and manages to miss with every single die. Nice going, Baldrick. Well, we adjust for the wind, and he fires another Inferno and manages to kill off that Plague Bearer. Better late than never, I guess. Nelly is up next, and she is our door opener, so she moves two squares up, and she hacks away at the green door. Even though we have a key, we still gotta punch it open with her sword. Back to our normal form, we manage to fail to open the door the first two attempts, but then we finally get it open on the third. And we are rewarded for our efforts by another double spawn card. Great. So in this room, the first card that I get for it is two fatties, and then I get another double spawn card, and so then to that we're going to add four more walkers and another fatty. It's almost like they don't want us to leave. Well, Samson the dwarf sees that we've got some real problems brewing up here. I don't want Nelly all alone on top of that spawn point, plus in front of a whole bunch of bad guys, so I move him up there to, you know, at least spread around some damage if we can just in case we draw an unlucky double activation or something. So Silas is my last to activate this round. He's going to spend his first two actions to move up with Samson and Nelly in front of that door. He's now got the Orcish Crossbow, which is another good two damage weapon. So now he can kill those fatties as well. It rolls two dice, and with his plus one to hit, he manages to kill off two fatties. Not only that, but that bumps him up yet another level to orange. When Silas goes to orange, he gets a free ranged attack every round, so he spends his final normal action to reload the orcish crossbow, and then fires again, killing another fatty and a walker. So over to the zombie turn, let's see how this goes. The three remaining zombies in the exit room pile out into my guys, and then we draw a spawn card for the red zone, and we get a double spawn card, which means that we go to the green zone and draw two cards, which gives us three walkers and another four walkers for seven walkers added to the three, giving us a really crowded exit of ten walkers. That's a lot of dead flesh to cut through, in addition that those two vault runners have made it out into the street and are looking pretty hungry right behind Baldrick. We're going to start the hero turn with Baldrick. He's going to wheel around and blast the Inferno spell at those two runners coming down the street. We move up a square into that big party in front of us and we shove the dagger into Samson's hand. That'll give him an extra attack with his sword. And because killing off those two ghouls finally brought Baldrick up to level 2, he's got an extra action, so he can take one more swing at that crowd of zombies with his hammer, but he misses. 
And now it's time for Samson to make up for lost time. With his dagger, he's now throwing three four-plus attacks with each action. With his first action, he kills one walker. With his second action, he kills two. And that finally brings him up to level two, so he gets another action. So two actions left, and he spends them both, killing two walkers with each. That was seven walkers he killed in this round. Much better. Took a big bite out of that horde. Nellie is up next, and with her four actions, she manages to clear out the last three walkers, clearing the way to the exit. Silas hasn't activated yet this round, but for the time being, I think it's better to have everyone together, so he's just going to stay where he is. The three walkers in the west continue to truck forward. The plague bearer Fatty manages to make it to the vault. For spawns, we're now in the orange. We get three zombies in the west and just a single runner in the north. That didn't work out too badly. Nelly activates, kills off that last runner, and then moves into the exit zone. The way is completely clear, our guys have done a good job. Everyone else packs themselves into this little teleportation circle, and we've won! First game of a Zombicide Black Plague down. Pretty good, I think I like it. I'll be revisiting this game from time to time. I think my guys did okay. Had a little trouble with doors, and Samson took a while to get going, but at the end of the day, we took two points of damage total and had a pretty good time. Zombie apocalypse, no big deal. Anyway, leave a comment below if you have any questions, observations, or concerns, and I will see you on the next one.